It was the week before Valentine's Day, and I was feeling optimistic about the prospects of finding someone special to celebrate it with. I had been single now for a few months, but I was ready to get back out there and find someone who I could really connect with. I decided to try my luck online and see if I could find a potential match. After doing some research, I signed up for some of the most popular dating sites and created my profiles. Within a few days, I had gotten a few messages from potential matches. One message in particular stood out to me. It was from a guy who had sent me a message asking me out for Valentine's Day. He told me his name was Josh and that he was a really successful attorney. He said he had recently rented a cabin in the woods outside of town and wanted to know if I'd be interested in joining him for dinner there on Valentine's Day. I was a little hesitant at first, but decided to give it a try. After all, what did I have to lose? I agreed to meet him at the cabin at 6 p.m. On Valentine's Day, I arrived at the cabin a few minutes early. Before I got out, I texted my best friend, telling her that I arrived at the date, even though she had my location that I shared with her. She forced me to make a deal with her that if I didn't text her every hour, then she'd call the police and come there. I agreed, knowing that she had my best intentions in mind. I was feeling a little nervous, but mostly excited. I took a deep breath and got out of the car. I knocked on the door, and after a few seconds, Josh opened it. He was even better looking in person. He gave me a warm smile and welcomed me inside. The cabin was beautiful. It was a large, two-story log cabin with a cozy living room and a beautiful fireplace. Josh had set the table for two and had prepared an incredible dinner. We had a great conversation and really connected. I still kept in touch with my best friend each hour and told her it was going really well. By the time dinner was over, it was almost 9 p.m. Josh suggested that we should take a walk and explore the area. I was hesitant at first, but he assured me that it would be safe. He seemed so sincere and so trustworthy, so I agreed. On the way there, my friend texted me, asking me why my location was moving out into the woods. I responded with laughing emojis and told her I was fine, but she seemed nervous. She asked me to update her in 10 minutes just to be safe, and although a bit annoyed, I agreed. We continued walking until we eventually reached a clearing in the woods. Josh told me that he had something special planned for us. He asked me to close my eyes, and when I opened them again, I saw that he had set up a picnic blanket and had brought a bottle of champagne. The area overlooked the snow-covered mountains, and it was a beautiful sight to say the least. At first, I was touched by his romantic gesture, but then I noticed something strange. He had a camera set up on a tripod, pointed directly at us. I asked him what it was for, but he just smiled and said it was part of the surprise. He had a pretty goofy sense of humor to him, so I didn't put it past him. As soon as we sat down, I mentioned him that I was already cold, but he reassured me and said we'd only be out for a few minutes. Josh popped the champagne open and poured two glasses for us. Before handing it to me, he pointed out to the other side of the mountain and said he camped up there earlier that winter with his buddies, so he was used to the freezing temperatures. I was impressed, knowing I wouldn't last out there for more than an hour. After talking about it some more, he handed me the glass, and we made a toast and started drinking. The time flew by, and before I knew it, it had already been 15 minutes past the time I was supposed to text my friend. As soon as I reached for my phone, I began to feel lightheaded, and my head started spinning in circles. I heard Josh saying something to me, but his voice sounded echoey and slurred. Before I knew it, I opened my eyes instantly feeling a raging headache as a bright light was shining above my eyes. It blinded me to the point where all I could see was white, until my eyes finally started to adjust and I could make out my surroundings. I was in a hospital. I instantly started freaking out and screaming. A doctor came running into the room and explained everything to me. I was in absolute disbelief and shock. Tears formed in my eyes. She told me that I'd been drugged. I had so many questions, but I didn't even know where to start. That's when the doctor walked out of the room and my best friend came running in. She was also in tears and embraced me in the tightest hug. It turns out, Josh drugged my champagne while he was distracting me. He carried me all the way back to the cabin until he saw my friend's car parked in the driveway. He dropped me on the ground and took off running. My friend called an ambulance and had me rush to the emergency room. The police know who he is and there's a warrant out for his arrest. We're just hoping that it's just a matter of time before he's caught. I still live in fear each day, knowing he's out there somewhere with the entire happening recorded on his camera. 
This night really changed my perspective on people. I always thought I had a great judgment of character, but I was terribly wrong. My best friend saved my life that day, and I'll forever be grateful. It was a typical day at the office. I had been working at this accounting firm for the past three years, and every day felt like a grind. I sat at my cubicle with the same paperwork I had been going over for the past hour and a half. I was exhausted, but I knew that I needed to finish this task if I wanted to get out of the office. It was Valentine's Day, and I had no plans. I was single, and had been for quite some time. I developed a bit of a crush on one of my coworkers but I had never worked up the courage to say anything to him. I had been hoping he might make the first move, but so far he hadn't. As five o'clock approached, I was getting ready to call it a day when I noticed a letter sitting on my desk. I hadn't seen it there before, but it was addressed to me. I was intrigued and immediately opened it up. It was a short note that said, let's go out tonight, 8 p.m., I'll drive. Then, at the bottom right-hand corner of the letter was an address to his house. I was confused and a little scared. I guess it was kind of weird. It could have been anyone, but I assumed it was from my coworker, given that he was the only person I really talked to. As I drove home, I started to put the pieces of the puzzle together. He'd always go out of his way to talk to me, and he'd always compliment me at work. I had a pretty good feeling that it was from him, so I decided to take a chance and go to his house. I arrived at 8pm sharp and got out of my car to ring the doorbell. I waited there in suspense, excited to see my secret admirer from work. I soon heard footsteps approaching the door, until it swung wide open. It was a man I'd never seen before. He had a look of excitement on his face, as he shook my hand and introduced himself as Mason. I think he noticed the bewildered look on my face, because he quickly said that he was the janitor, and added that I've probably never seen him before. I certainly hadn't, and I instantly felt uncomfortable. Without giving much thought beforehand, I told him that I was sorry and that I had to go. That was when I noticed the look on his face. He was furious. I apologized again and quickly started walking to my car as he screamed profanities at me. I was genuinely terrified, not expecting any of this to happen. I drove back to my apartment as fast as I could, constantly looking behind me to make sure he wasn't following me. Once I was confident enough that he wasn't, I turned into my complex and parked. Once I got inside, I had a sick feeling in my stomach that lasted the entire night. The way he reacted when I left his house scared me to death, and I knew I'd be in danger if he really worked in my office building. Well, the next day, I made sure to arrive at work a little late, trying to minimize my chances of running into him alone. As soon as I saw my boss, I asked to speak with him and sat down across from him at his desk. I explained everything to him, mentioning how the letter turned out to be from a man who claimed to be Mason. When I told this to my boss, his expression drastically changed to a worried look. He told me that he was hired yesterday and immediately fired on the first day of the job. He was in desperate need of another janitor because the previous one had recently quit, so he hired Mason. He realized that he fabricated his resume when the background check came back. It wasn't good. Mason had three ongoing criminal trials. Two were for assault on women, and the third was for armed robbery. When I heard that, I lost all composure and broke down crying. I was just feet away from him, alone at night, and I didn't tell anybody where I was going. Months later, I found out that Mason was guilty of all three accounts, and the crimes committed were horrible and disgusting. Looking back on everything now, I can't help but feel sheer regret. I made an impulsive decision to meet at the address, and it almost cost me my life. He pleaded guilty to each crime, so I realized that he knew he was already facing a lot of prison time, and most likely had something horrible planned with me that night. I used to love Valentine's Day. It's a day that's dedicated to celebrating love and happiness. In the past, I've normally spent the day out with my friends, going out to restaurants and exchanging gifts, but this year was different. I had found someone special, or at least I thought. His name was Zach. We started talking on Instagram when he sent me a nice message. Within days, we exchanged phone numbers and were texting all the time, and I was really starting to like him. I almost felt like it was moving too fast but it strangely felt natural. I felt like I had known him my entire life. The time flew by, and before I knew it, I realized that we chatted every day for at least two hours for the entire month. Although everything felt perfect, it wasn't. Zach lived in Florida, and I live in Texas. 
It wasn't ideal by any means, since we were both in school and would rarely have time to visit each other in person. Despite the difficult circumstances, Zach asked me out on the phone on Valentine's Day, and I said yes. I had been lonely for so long, and I finally felt like I found the one for me. Right before I hung up the phone, he told me that he sent a package that would be arriving that night. The hours leading up to that moment were full of anticipation. I was already super happy that we were dating, and was beyond excited to see what he got for me. That night, he texted me, telling me that the package was delivered and to go check the front door. I took no time to hesitate, so I got up to check. My jaw almost dropped to the ground when I saw a giant cardboard box sitting on my front porch. I couldn't believe it. I struggled as I dragged the box into my living room and grabbed the knife to cut it open. There, inside the massive box, was a giant teddy bear. It was the cutest thing I'd ever seen. My first thought was how thoughtful he was to have sent it all the way from his hometown to me. I was completely shocked, and I immediately picked it up and hugged it tight against my chest. I smiled to myself, feeling so lucky to have such an amazing boyfriend who cared about me. I carried it into my room and plopped him down on the bed next to me. I spent the rest of the night talking on the phone with Zach, talking and laughing with him the entire time. Up until this point, I never had the slightest feeling that anything was off with Zach, but that started to change when he called me just before I went to bed. Our conversation started off just like any other, and we chatted for a few minutes before he asked me if I wanted to play a game. I was kind of thrown off by the question, but I agreed, excited to see what he had planned. He explained how we'd ask each other questions, like what color is your room, and then we'd have to guess to see if we got it right. I started off by asking him what color my socks were, and he surprisingly guessed the color on the first try. They were blue. He asked me some questions, but I got most of them wrong. As it went on, I started growing suspicious of Zach. Although it didn't seem like it before, I was starting to get a weird feeling that something was off. Out of the several questions I asked him, he had gotten every single one right. I asked him about it in a joking manner, and he replied saying that he just knew and added that he feels really connected with me. It was a sweet thing to say, but something about it was rubbing me the wrong way, so I told him I was going to sleep since I had to be up early. I didn't want to automatically pass it off as something creepy. I guess a part of me was a little worried that we really did have that strong of a connection. And like I said before, it felt like it was all happening so fast. I've always struggled with anxiety, so I calmed myself down as I realized that I was just overreacting. The teddy bear was great for that, so I cuddled up with it in bed and fell asleep. Sometime during the night, I woke up to use the bathroom. I'm a light sleeper, and I usually wake up at least once or twice during the night. As soon as I came back to my room, I thought I saw a strange red blinking light coming from the teddy bear. I wiped my eyes and crawled back into bed, assuming I was just seeing things, given that I was half asleep. I pulled the teddy bear closer so that we were face to face, and I shut my eyes. Then, it happened again. This time, I was almost positive that I wasn't seeing things. My eyes fully opened, and I laid there, frozen, waiting for it to happen again to confirm my suspicions. And sure enough, I saw it. There was a light inside the left eye that would blink every 10 seconds or so. My groggy state quickly turned into a full-out panic attack. I ran out of my room and straight into the kitchen, where I grabbed the knife and began cutting into it. I was desperately hoping for it to be some sort of misunderstanding, until I cut through the fabric beneath the eye. It was a camera. I screamed, almost falling back into the kitchen table behind me. My mind was racing, and my heart felt like it was going to explode. Without even thinking, I grabbed the camera and threw it in the sink, and started soaking it underwater. I truly had no idea what to do, so I called my best friend. She wasn't happy that I woke her up, but she quickly realized the situation I was in and told me that she'd be heading over right away. When she got there, she couldn't believe it was true. She tried to calm me down and eventually called the police. By the time they got to my house, I was covered in tears and shaking, as I kept thinking how he'd been watching me the entire day and night. The police searched for fingerprints on the bear and tore it apart for any other evidence but the camera was all they had, which I had already destroyed. They asked for Zach's social media accounts and phone number, which I gave them. When they searched for him online, his accounts were all deleted. The phone number was deactivated, and the police were at a dead end. Well, it turns out, I wasn't the only victim. A month later, the detective on the case informed me that this was happening in other states, where three other women came to the police with an almost identical story. 
Looking back, I feel so stupid for ever getting myself into a long distance relationship with someone I'd never even met in person. I still get sick, thinking that Zach, or whatever his real name was, still has the footage of me in my bedroom, which used to be one of the few places I felt safe. I could tell from the way my friends and family look at me that they feel sorry for my naivety, but I'm just grateful that I found everything out sooner than later. The person or persons involved have still not been caught, and I honestly don't feel safe in my house anymore.